The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar by Solution Exchange on preparing for an SAP HANA migration utilizing SAP data archiving. We're happy you could attend and hope you will find the presentation interesting. My name is Jochen Heger, and I will be your host throughout the session. Up front, a few administrative items. Our presentation today will take about 20 minutes with five minutes reserved for questions at the end. A few procedural and technical notes on this. All participants are on mute during the full duration of the webinar. Please post any questions or concerns through the questions function in your administration panel on the right side of your screen. If you cannot hear us or cannot see the presentation, please also alert us through the questions panel. We will send out a transcript to those who are interested after the webinar. Please let us know via email to info at solutionexchange.com. That's info at solutionxchg.com. Let's dive right into the topic. Our featured speaker today is Dave Rogers, Principal Consultant and Data Archiving Specialist. Dave has many years of experience in SAP data archiving and has completed many successful projects with clients all over the United States. Dave, please introduce yourself. Hi, this is Dave Rogers. Uh, thanks, Jochen. Um, so today our topic is preparing for an SAP HANA migration utilizing SAP data archive. Okay, so the main topic here is is relating to SAP HANA and how to prepare for a, an eventual SAP HANA migration. So all customers approaching or looking at HANA must understand that SAP charges for HANA based on volume. So what that means is the more data you have to process, the more expensive it's going to be. Uh, looking at the economics of SAP HANA, um, the key here is to shrink the amount of data that is put into customers' HANA systems, and this starts with putting a value on uh, their data. Um, this means creating a plan to archive older, rarely used data that is no longer critical to ongoing or real-time operations. So it is very important to look at your data, look at your database, see how you can shrink the size of your database before going um, uh, to SAP HANA. So some of the drivers relating to an archiving project, um, and in particular relating to HANA, would be to reduce the total cost of ownership for these new in-memory systems. So that's very specific to um, archiving prior to a HANA migration. Uh, also, with a smaller database size, that would decrease the downtime during a migration. Um, from a, uh, an overall standpoint relating to archiving, another driver would be database and storage limitation avoidance, uh, performance consistency, and data storage volume uh, predictability. Um, another key driver or key component of an archiving project is to follow legal audit and regulatory requirements. So this means controlling, um, having a controlled and compliant this a position of long-term retention. So your long-term retention is typically seven, 10, or 15 years. And by uh, uh, being in that compliant state, you are reducing the, the liability relating to that. Um, a sustainable implementation, so that's also important. So uh, the key is to use SAP standard functionality uh, for archiving and retrieval as much as possible. There may be a need for some customizations, but by using the standard functionality, you are having a sustainable implementation. Uh, also utilizing a documented and repeatable process with control so that when you're executing the archiving, you have controls in place so that you are doing verification tasks and making sure that your archiving uh, is running successfully. Also, the key here is to avoid negative impacts on the business. So archiving projects uh, can uh, create some uh, negative impacts to the business. And as part of a project, you want to identify what the impacts are ahead of time. 
um, put a plan in place to avoid those particular impacts before implementing an archiving project. So the data archiving process itself is a multi-step process. There are typically uh, three steps in the archiving process. The write or the archive step, um, the delete step, and then the store step. Um, the archive step, what it does is it looks at the database using what we call an archive object and it determines what data is eligible for archiving and make sure that it's met its residency time policy. Once it determines the data it can archive, it writes that data out to a uh, uh, mounted file system, writes the files out there. The delete step, what the delete step does is it reads the data in the file system to verify that the data is correct, um, verify there's no issues with the files, and then it goes and does a commit within the database and deletes those records out of the database. Uh, the third step is the store step. So you have the file sitting in the file system. The final step would be to move those files from the file system to a storage system. For example, uh, KGS storage system utilizing the ICAS um, backend storage media. So as the data is archived, the, what we want to focus on here is that access is still available from an end user's perspective. So once data is archived, it doesn't mean that the data is no longer available to be viewed. Um, this slide is focusing on the archiving concept relating to information lifecycle management. So what I want to focus on here is access frequency. So when data gets created and is going through its uh, various stages of, of changing and status being updated, et cetera, the access is, is quite frequent and you want to keep that data within the database. As time goes by and a record becomes business complete, the access frequency starts to drop. So the time when a, a document is created to the time when it is eligible to be moved to the archive system is called residency time. So that's the time frame that needs to be determined for all of the eligible data that you're looking to archive. Um, as the data is, is archived and sitting in the storage system, access frequency is typically quite low. You may have an audit, a lawsuit, some sort of return or something of that nature where you may see some spikes in, in access frequency um, within the storage system. The overall lifespan of a document is called retention time. So as mentioned in a previous slide, determining retention times for your specific data uh, is critical to an archiving project. Archiving considerations necessary for the functional teams or process teams and the technical teams uh, are all listed here on this slide. Uh, to put it simply, what to archive, how much to archive, and when to archive. Um, uh, as mentioned in the previous slide, we need to define the online residency time uh, differentiated by org units like company code, et cetera, or by doc type. Um, the next consideration would be to look at long-term retention and disposition criteria based on uh, organization or by country and also looking at regulatory requirements. Uh, another key factor would be uh, timing for archiving. So are you gonna archive on a monthly basis? Are you gonna archive after a fiscal year end? Um, so that's also another key requirement that needs to be determined. Also frequency of archiving, which I just mentioned, daily, monthly, or annually. Um, the next point would be looking at the methods of access to the data uh, exceeding online residency time. What's the frequency that end users are gonna go out and, and need to retrieve archive data? And, and what specific methods do they use to look at archive data? Do they have custom reports that they're using? Are they using standard SAP transactions that may already inherently have the ability to read from the archive uh, system already? Uh, authorization access or restrictions to archive data need to be considered as well. Um, and also from the standpoint of executing archiving, we need to look at consolidation of archiving runs um, by groups. So you may group your runs by company codes or by plants or specific sales orgs. 
and we typically do that when we are restricting data based on um, typically country requirements that may have differentiating resin, uh, retention times. And also with archiving, so the larger your system is, the larger your tables are, um, uh, the volumes relating to that can be challenging to archiving programs and processes. So um, as part of our testing and, and, and QA process, we try to limit the size of the archiving runs uh, for performance purposes, et cetera. But if you start archiving earlier, uh, you're typically better off from the standpoint of uh, run times, et cetera. So the first step in any archiving project is to look at your database and to know uh, the um, uh, to know what your database looks like from a table size perspective, index size perspective, et cetera. So we call that the database analysis phase or archiving assessment. Um, so the approach is is listed here in these three bullets. So what we do, the first step is to do an analysis of a customer's SAP system to determine data management targets and also to determine potential archiving yields, meaning how much can we get off the system um, you know, if we have a two-year residency time, et cetera. So we perform a database analysis against tables, typically greater than, than one gigabyte. We chart the top tables by size. We look at the fastest growing tables. Uh, we put together the top tables plus the index indexes by size, um, which equals data consumption. We do a custom table analysis as well, and then we map those top tables and indexes to specific archiving objects and to other data management methods, which could be, um, if you're talking about uh, basis type tables, you could have a, a deletion program in the system that may be available to, to run to be able to manage the, the more technical tables. Um, we perform a table analysis on the identified key table. So doing a table analysis um, highlights distribution across time. So for example, FI document, we would look at the BKPF table and uh, we would look at the distribution of, of data across time, either by company code, fiscal year, uh, period, et cetera. And then we can show potential archiving yields for the top archiving objects. And then finally, we build an archiving strategy and solution option. So we break down the archiving and data management targets into manageable phases. You don't want to do a big bang type implementation and try to implement you know, 20 archive objects at once. It just doesn't make sense. And you don't have enough background processes, et cetera, in the system to do that. Um, and the final bullet here would be to list recommended uh, phases. So we, we set up a specific archiving sequence. Um, and then and what that does, it reduces potential issues and increases archive efficiency. Here's a, just an example of a spreadsheet created from uh, uh, an SAP system. So we look at the top tables, we, we obtain the, the size of the tables and the size of the, the indexes associated with a particular table, and then we map that to an archive object or to a data management cleanup method um, to determine which archive objects are, are tied to a table. So you may have a table like COEP, which is, uh, where there may be multiple archive objects that can archive data from that table. We'll also look at that and, and determine which op applicable archive objects can handle the archiving out of that specific table. So there may be multiple archive objects used to archive data out of one particular table. And finally, as, as after you go through all of those particular steps, we typically put together a spreadsheet that looks similar to this. This is our archive object chart um, highlighted by colors. These are typical phases within a project. So phase one here is looking at um, uh, high yield archiving, also low risk objects. So these are typically uh, technical objects that we can get off the system quickly. So it's a way to get your feet wet and also archive a, a lot of data out of the system. 
um, and then it's broken out by other phases. This particular example is broken out by doing some uh, some CO and FI archiving, which this data is not relevant for um, tax audits, so it's not part of, of DART. Um, and then you have additional phases that run from MMSD, ECO, et cetera. So this is a typical chart that gets created that helps you determine what your yields are going to be, helps you determine what your phases are going to look like, et cetera. So looking at the approach that we take uh, within an implementation, um, uh, and there are approaches, a documented, repeatable process. Um, it, we'll focus on the, the, the top arrows here. So the first thing in any project is obviously to build your project team, determine who are critical resources as part of your project, like uh, key business users, et cetera, um, and build that project team uh, is obviously the first step. And then we go through a technical preparation uh, of the project that's doing like the database analysis setup, et cetera, the customizing tied to the archiving, and then we go through the prototyping so that we can demo the solution to the to the uh, key stakeholders, et cetera. Um, we run through a functional analysis. So from a business process perspective, we want to look at, okay, how does archiving particular data impact certain business processes? So we want to work with the business and identify any uh, impacts that could uh, come into play. Uh, we do gap identification, gap resolution, and then sign off. So we have a listing here of, of you know the specific steps that we do within our approach. So we follow this approach on every project that we run through. Okay, so from a solution exchange perspective, so we're shifting gears and just looking at what solution exchange offers. Uh, we have expertise in, in these following areas in business process analysis, um, SAP module customizing as it relates to data archiving, also document archiving, and linking SAP to um, other storage systems, for example, KGS. We have strong project management experience throughout our, uh, our team. And also we focus on enterprise content management um, functionality and have uh, a good deal of experience in that area as well. So by adding all of this different expertise, we feel we provide a good overall uh, uh, solution for customers. From a company profile perspective, Solution Exchange um, uh, prides itself on presenting innovative German software products to the U.S. market. Um, one example here would be KGS. So uh, Solution Exchange is a premier KGS reseller in the U.S. Again, KGS is an archive storage system. Um, we also have strong SAP archiving and docu document management experience. So most of the resources who are part of Solution Exchange have over 15 years and upwards of 20 years of SAP archiving and document management, document management experience. Uh, we specialize on low cost, high quality, high ROI SAP add-on solutions from selected vendors. So not just KGS, but if you're looking at from a tax audit perspective, you may be looking at TJC, audit extraction cockpit, Etc. And also, as mentioned about the experience, we have over 20 years of experience in the SAP implementation uh, market. So that concludes our presentations. I'll open it up to any questions that we may have. Thanks very much, Dave. And uh, we do have uh, some questions. Um, one question I have here goes back to your opening slides, I guess. Why is data archiving uh, before you start so important to do before you start a SAP HANA migration? Uh, good question. Um, well, uh, basically HANA again is is priced by volume. So a lot of the 
lot of the customers that we see um, have a need for um, implementing SAP archiving due to the fact that they have a, an upcoming SAP HANA migration coming up. So HANA, again, is priced by volume. So the less data you migrate, the lower the cost of, of your uh, implementation would be. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, one other question. How do you set realistic expectations for uh, data archiving within an organization? Uh, good question. Um, so archiving is a necessary component of maintaining a healthy system um, through the, the management of volume in a compliant manner. Um, so what you have to do is look at archiving in a way that yet yeah, most customers who have a large amounts of volume has to, they have to do archiving. So if, to maintain a healthy system, um, archiving also will improve response times with your system. Um, you know, through the rebuilding of indexes and reorging of tables. Um, also, there are many standard archive retrieval options available as well as additional third-party options which can further help in reducing the impact on users. Great, thank you. And the uh, last question I have here is who needs to be involved in a data archiving project? Okay, so the, the typical, I guess, project team is made up of a project manager or a project liaison from the client side. Uh, a group of key business users, so uh, key users from each of the specific functional areas which you plan on archiving uh, from. Uh, basis or technical support for setting up the infrastructure and for troubleshooting, et cetera. Um, you would need an archive administrator, so somebody from the client side who can manage the archive server customizing, setup, troubleshooting, et cetera. And then uh, typically we would recommend to have a solution exchange consultant who would be able to uh, guide everyone through the process and help um, you know, lead the project to success. Perfect, thank, thank you very much. And uh, we currently don't have uh, any further questions, but if you, uh, do want to ask us uh, something in particular or you have any um, other um, technical topics or organizational topics you'd like to discuss, feel free to contact us at any time at info at solutionexchange.com. And with that, uh, this concludes our webinar. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Dave, thank you very much for giving us a great thank overview you. on data archiving. And I um, hope we see you all again next time. Thank you very much and goodbye.